Hello and welcome to another Full Court Press podcast. I am the Big Cactus today. Luke Taylor here with my guy, Mr. Ball, NCA mm. Wilson, Sammy D. What's going on, my friend? Not much, LT. How you feeling? Oh, I feel pretty good because we're talking we're talking about something near and dear to our heart. We're actually going to give you a um, really interesting um, what's word, analysis on this. So DePaul did it. Dwayne Peavy, the D, the E, W-A-N-E-Y, N-E, PV. Let Tony Stubblefield relieve him of his duties after a three and fifteen start. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you know, you and I were kind of talking throughout the season as DePaul got off to a rocky start. Um, you know, we talk about the Blue Demons often off air, and um, we're like, you know, is uh, there the. I think everyone around the program knew that there was going to be a change. No one knew when, right? Unless mm -hmm. something miraculously happened um, with mm -hmm. Stubblefield's team and whatnot. And it didn't happen. And um, I thought uh, the athletic director and vice president of DePaul, Dwayne Peavy, handled it very well, um, making the termination in the middle of the season. We'll get into why I think that, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's the, those things are never hard to do. I thought it was handled appropriately. Um, mm -hmm as a first point, you know, just saying, Hey, it's like, we all had the same goals. The goals weren't met. This is the best thing for the program. Right. Um, so I want to give PV some, some props for making that decision when he did, because I do right. believe it gives DePaul a head start into what could come. And then that, that'll be kind of the next thing that we talk about. Right. So are, right. what do you right. think about the mid season terminations? Um, well, obviously DePaul was the first one to do it. And right. And I, and I, and I, and I think there's some more coming. Um, yeah. if you look at Louisville, um disastrous uh i think they're six and 12 uh kenny Payne is 10 and 40 in in two years uh i don't see how he's now they did the the ad a couple weeks ago came out in support of him uh louisville doesn't I, have said, I, I wouldn't call it support i would i would say right. hey don't don't expect us to to change directions mid-season right right and i think people in the know probably believe and is fairly confident that it's due to financial restraints um, with former coaches and payouts still being made. And they're going to have to shuffle some money around um, to make any right. changes there. Right. Um, so I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't call it support, but I would right. say, hey, just right. manage your expectations, Louisville fans. You know, Right. So. And, and I think there's also the, the Mike Boyton at Oklahoma State. I think that's the one that's going to happen. I don't see them making the mm -hmm. tournament. Uh, he's won 115 and 99 in his in his tenure. He's 0 and 5 in the Big Ten. He's only made one NCAA appearance. I think it was in 2017. Um, he's a great recruiter, but just has not gotten it done. And the other one you got to look at, and actually the the uh, the publication I read said Darren DeVries would replace him, uh, which you know I just don't see that. The other one they've been talking about. I mean, you got to wonder about Jerry Stackos at Vanderbilt. That's a really tough place to win. I think Kevin yeah. Stallings was the one I can remember last, you know, doing something at Vanderbilt. I'm probably missing somebody, but uh, that's a tough one. And the other one that's near and dear to my heart is Juwan Howard at Michigan. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be interesting. They're doing a football coaching hire right now. Will a basketball coaching hire happen in about a month month or so from now? Um, you know, I, I think they're going to give Howard one more year. I think he's going to get one more year, and then if you don't perform, we're going to get rid of you. Um, but DePaul made it. DePaul made the choice. And it's interesting who they're putting in the different publications. And we have a really unique view, both as DePaul graduates, uh, student athlete you were, and as a coach I was. So we get a really, we kind of know the DePaul mantra, even though PV's newer and what have you. And uh, uh, Dr. Manuel, the uh, president, is looking forward to um, really building a better uh, basketball program, hopefully. But, um, and we've actually had some of the people that they're recommending or, or saying might get the job we've actually had on the podcast. Well, that's the exciting thing about the full court press podcast is, you know, Boom. we've done a, uh, we've done a fantastic job and, you know, you're, you take the lead in, uh, scheduling these interviews and whatnot. And we really wanted to focus this year on mid majors, you know, yep. and we've gotten some of the best mid major coaches on the podcast and, you know, now the best. Yeah. The best. And yeah, so it's, yeah. So I mean, now they're, I mean, it's no, it should be no surprise that now they're in line to potentially take head coaching mm -hmm. jobs um, yep. as vacancies open around the country. Yep. So yep. it's been fun to talk to these guys, learn a little bit about their culture, their style, their backgrounds. Um, so yeah, some of the names being thrown around in popular press, uh, we've had on the show and we have yep. our own thoughts on them. 
So. Yep. so here's so I read an article uh, USA Today, and they were saying who are the top ten, and they actually put in uh, their pick, and I think it was USA Today put in their pick as Tim Anderson. I know we're both familiar with him somewhat. He was the interim head coach, former head coach or former assistant coach for uh, Dave Lato 2.0. Uh, he's an Illinois assistant. I just don't see that. Uh, he has no head coaching experience. Uh, PV obviously um, made the wrong choice with Stubblefield. I know he's a well-regarded recruiter, but really struggled in his first head coaching job in his, what was he, 50s maybe, early 60s? Yeah. Um, which I'm not trying to be ageism, but... Late late 50s, um, I'm going to say mid-late 50s. So Yeah. So here, here are the picks, and I'm curious what you think, okay? So number one was Will Wade. Yeah. <clears throat> McNeese State, um, obviously... Are these in uh, any order? Or just yeah, they're just in order. They did their okay. top 10. Okay. Yeah. So number one was Will Wade, uh, former LSU coach. I want to dive into him because I think we both agree he would be a great pick. I don't know if he'd take the Dol- DePaul job. All right. Then you got uh, Bobby Hurley, who you love near and dear. He's really struggled at um, at Arizona State. Three out of seven, three out of the seven years he's been in the NCAA tournament. Uh, he's only got a 55% winning record. Then you got Bryce Drew at Grand Canyon, the Loops. He was fired from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. He went from 19 win team in uh, 16, 17 to only 19 and 23 a year later, year or two later. So he's 81 and 29 at Grand Canyon. They play in the uh, the WAC. So I mean, they're really favored to do that. So then you have um, Richard Patino, Jr. at oh. New Mexico. He is uh, 16 and three right now, I believe, and uh, has done a pretty good, pretty darn good job in New Mexico. He struggled at Minnesota. Got let go by Minnesota. Uh, And then you have Drew Valentine at Loyola, who's crossed down. He's 48 and 35, young guy. Disciple of Porter Moser, who's at Oklahoma. You've got Josh Schertz. Schertzy, baby. From uh, the Sycamores, Indian State. A former guest of the Full Court Press (laughs) podcast. Uh, He's doing a fantastic job at Indiana State. He's 50 and 36, second year. Uh, He's 23 win team. He went from 11 to 20 to what he's doing now. Brian Mullins is kind of an intriguing name, and I'm going to tell you why. He's at SIU. He's also a Porter Moser disciple. I believe his brother owns uh, one of the biggest AU. uh, I think it's the Illinois Wolves in in Illinois and Chicago land-based. He's younger. And then Darren DeVries, I just don't see him taking this job. Uh, He's got a great thing at Drake. I think he's going to be in line for Iowa, Iowa State, places like that. Uh, he's at Drake. We've had him on the podcast. Another podcast guest, Brian Wardle, uh, who I really like. He uh, went from five and twenty-seven to four twenty-win seasons, and he's fourteen and five. Then the last one is Tim Anderson out of Illinois. And I go. We actually have two other people, two or three other people that we would, you know, also suggest. So, out of those ten, what are your thoughts on a couple of them that you think would be a good fit and potentially take the job? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, those are two separate questions, LT. Like, I think that's going to be one of the issues with DePaul is do they qualify as a good fit, yes or no, but then are they actually interested in the job? And that's what PV and the search committee are going to be fighting against, right? How are they going to be promoting this job as a step in the right direction for some of these coaches, as an opportunity that will have the resources, the funding, um to really build a program around because i mean all the coaches you name that were on that list as well as some of the ones that are on our own personal lists they're successful in their own right right now right Mm -hmm. so this needs to be a positive transition for them with the opportunity um out of the list that you named i love will wade he's 41 years old i love the youth that he brings but like you're not going to find a 41 year old who has the experience that he has yet right yep and obviously what happened with LSU, he built a really strong program, um, got into some trouble with um, the NCAA and whatnot. And recruiting, and yep. Yes. But, so don't, but, don't, but don't you think we kind of need that at DePaul, a little bit of uh... – I do. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I – if you any whoever gets Will Wade in his next tenure, and I don't think he's going to stay at McNeese State long, right? I think he's yeah. going to get some offers um, at the end of the season, whether he stays for another year, maybe I don't know. But whoever gets Will Wade is going to have a coach who will do what it takes to get top talent, right? Mm-hmm. And what he got in trouble for, obviously, is like recruiting violations and things like that the transitions with NIL and transfer portal and all that kind of stuff, make it easier for a guy with that kind of attitude to build a program quickly. So would you say he's ahead of the curve? (laughs) 
<laughs> Maybe he knew what was going to happen. I don't know. But I think it's, um, you know, when you get 41 year olds or got coaches in there, like late thirties, forties, um, and there's very few of them out there right now that have the, um, success that Will Wade's had, um, at uh, LSU. And now he's 16 and two at McNeese state. Um, like 17 and two, actually 17 and two now. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, yep. I think what you're going to have is it, what's happening in the recruiting cycle is players want to play for coaches who understand it's turning into a player's league now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like this new school approach to coaching, which mm -hmm. some, some people have a hard time with. I have a hard time watching it and watching it happen and everything, but that's the reality mm -hmm. of it. Right. And I think mm -hmm. Will Wade understands that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, you know, a transition from him getting out of the South and going into the big East. Um, I actually do think he, I mean, he's a, he's a Southern boy at heart, you know, I mean, he spent his career down there and everything, but I think moving him into the big East, that's a basketball heavy conference just fits right in with who he is as a person and as a coach. And I think, um, it'll, it'll take a couple years to be competitive, but I think that he would be out of the list you named. He would be my top choice as a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Right. And and I think is he's won everywhere he's gone. UTC, the moccasins of Chattanooga. He won at VCU. He won at LSU. I mean, he struggled his last year in the recruiting violations, but they were 25 and five in the 2018-2019 uh, season. Mm -hmm. And then what he's done at McNeese State. Yeah. You can't you can't deny that. But I just Crazy. I hate to say this, but I see him more as an Oklahoma State guy. Uh, someone, you know, maybe on a bigger stage now, is the Big East bigger than the Big 12 in basketball next year? I don't know. You've got Arizona, Arizona State. you got Utah. I mean, they've added BYU. I mean, that's a really good basketball conference. It's yeah. I mean, I, I do agree with that. And I think, I think part, so when you, when you're coaching for a college university in a big metropolitan area i do think personality comes into into play right yep. and i think he has an opportunity to if he does build a program whoever builds the program around DePaul, the first coach that's going to come in and be successful will instantly become a celebrity in that city right <laughs> like i mean it will and i you can't get that and kind of a, well you can but it's it's a different atmosphere in small college towns right compared mm -hmm. to like what he could potentially build and then you also look at like one of his mentors is uh shock smart who's in the big yep. east as well right so i think there's a lot to play into that um that is why i like him over everybody else um the fact that you know that he's had success at such a young age he's a go-getter i think you need that kind of grit and blue collar kind of uh, mentality to do well in Chicago. And I think he'd be a great fit, but it's to your point, are there going to be more appealing options to him at the end of the season? I think so. And, he, and, he, and do you think this is why they've kind of PV pulled the trigger when he did try to get ahead of it? Yeah. I mean, I think you have to do that. And I think it shows that um, it starts to put into coaches who know that there is a new step for them after this season. It starts to kind of put that nugget in their head, right? Mm -hmm. um, both head coaches and assistant head coaches that are out there yeah. as well, yeah. you know, being yeah. able to say like, Hey, like this is like, you know, this could be potential for me. And especially, um, you know, as DePaul is moving through the big East schedule right now, there could be some assistant coaches in the big East who look down the sideline and saying, Hey, I could be down there this year. You know, yep. our next this time next year. You have a guy that you really like, which we're going to talk about. I did. So, um, and and to enter Will Wade, sixty eight point five percent winning percentage as a head coach. That's pretty damn good. I think with the transfer portal nil, um, I think he can move the boat far faster than maybe others. Okay, I'm going to group a couple. What do you think about Bobby Hurley and Bryce Drew, both NBA former NBA players? You know, they've they've um they've had some successes. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think I think Bobby Hurley was a hot name the last time uh before the uh, Stubblefield um debacle. Mm -hmm. Um but I just you know, I know you like it. He's only got a 55% winning percentage. You know, he's three out of seven tournaments at Arizona State. He obviously has brought in some very good recruits. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I like, I don't think, um, 
I know Bryce Drew's name is going to be thrown out there a lot this year um, with different vacancies. I don't really think he's going to be a good fit for um, DePaul and in the city of Chicago. I think he will do well at um, another program that's like a college atmosphere town, you know, somewhere to like where he had success as a player and yep, whatnot. Right, so, yep. um, Bobby Hurley, I think, is the better fit out of the two. Um, you know, he was very interested in the job. Um, 10 years ago, I want to say nine years ago, right? Um, when he was coming off of a couple successful seasons at Buffalo. Was that, that, was that Dave Lato 2.0? That, that was Dave, Dave Lato 2.0. Uh, yeah. So that was, I think, eight years that, ago. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, he was one of the final candidates for the position. They just couldn't come to terms, from what I understand. And he moved on and accepted the job at Arizona State, right? So we do know he had interest in the potential of the job there. DePaul was no worse than they are today. You know, um, so who knows? Maybe maybe he still has interest in that. I do think that with the right support system around him, um, I think he could do pretty good, pretty well. You know, mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that there could potentially be two Hurley brothers in the Big East. Yeah, you like, like that. Like how much energy is that? And just like such a such a strong basketball name and yep. potentially the strong strongest basketball conference. That's where they belong. Yep. Yeah. And I, and I think the thing is I've heard, I've read somewhere a couple of weeks ago that Hurley's kind of had some rumblings at Arizona state, mm -hmm. but you're going into a new conference next year and it's going to be, you know, basketball is pushing that card. I think in the big 12 over football, especially losing Texas and Oklahoma and bringing yep. in Arizona. I mean, mm -hmm. Arizona's having some issues too, but, yeah. um, you know, another one you talked about, like a uh, family members in the big East together, you got to talk about Richard Patino, you know, his dad is, going to be 150 and be a great, 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 great grandfather. And he's still going to be coaching in the big East. Yeah. You know, Richard uh, Patino is a really good coach. He's had success, different spots he's been in. Um, I don't like the fit in Chicago. Um, I, I, I think he's also in um, a part of his career that the next position he takes will probably, he, he probably wants to see some longevity, right? And I think he's had enough success as a head coach out there at the different stops he's had. I'm not sure DePaul would be a step forward for him. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know how much of a um, salary increase it would be for Will Wade. It'd be almost six times his current salary. If they keep, even keep him at this double field at, I think double field was what making 1.2. Uh, yeah. 1.2, 1.5, depending on who yeah. you ask to. So it's yeah. kind of, yeah. Six or seven. Okay. So let's stay in Chicago. There's, there's two guys. Well, there's a couple guys that are linked to Chicago. What do you think of Drew Valentine? I like, I like coach Valentine, you know, um, yeah. moving from a Loyola to a DePaul in the big East. I don't think that he's, he's kind of a wild card, right? Cause nobody mm. knows how good he's going to be or not going to be. Because right. he didn't build that program at Loyola. That was Porter right. Moser. Exactly. And so it's it, it's kind of a wild card. I do think it's a risky – it would be a risky move. I think the job would be appealing for him, right? Mm -hmm. I think he is somebody who would take the offer seriously. Um, I personally think he should – he probably needs a couple more years to prove himself as a head coach. I think it's yeah. um, it's it's still pretty new to him, and he hasn't – just kind of blown everybody away, you know, by what yep. he's done at Loyola. But yep. um, I don't, it, it, I, I like the name being thrown out there. I like his age. I like, you know, that he has really strong ties in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know yeah. what else you like? You like his sneaker game too. Oh, he's got, he's, he's got a good sneaker game. I think he's yeah. got the best of any head uh, division one coach right now. Yeah. We try to get him on the podcast and no luck. So we'll still, uh, We'll still try. I mean, I don't know if he's got his nice sneaker. See, he's got a lot of sneakers. I have like two. I got orange and pink. Just saying. Okay. But uh, so I was on that. And to stay in Chicago, Brian Mullins. So he's kind of a – he's the same thing as Valentine. Young guy. Um, you know, he's doing well at SIU. They're not in that upper tier with the Drakes, the Bradleys, mm -hmm. now the Indiana States. Um, he, he could have had a really good team. He lost two guys to the transfer portal. One guy is uh, – is uh, I think Donnie Jones at uh, number fifty-five at Purdue. He played at Southern Illinois last year, so um, I you know, but he's got great connections to the AAU scene in, in Chicago land. So yeah. I mean, that's big. I just I think he just doesn't have a proven body of work yet. And no offense to him, he's a great. All these guys are great coaches, <clears throat> great coaches, and I think we'd be lucky to really have any of them. But I just I don't 
see Brian Mullins. I think it's a good option, but I don't think it's the right option yet. I think you got to yeah, give him like, I think you like Drew Valentine some more body kind of work. Up. Yeah, you want to see Brian Mullins move up into a uh, more powerful mid-major program and and do well. Yeah, but he could turn programs. that into a more powerful mid-major program. I mean, the Missouri Valley sure. should get two, maybe three bids this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I know. I mean, you know, you mentioned his ties with um, you know one of the better AAU programs in the Midwest and Illinois and whatnot. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's not 10, 20 years ago. You know, like right. programs that need to rebuild are taking advantage of the transfer portal. It's yep. not, it's not AAU players these days. Right. Right. Um, right. Yep. So it's, um, that doesn't really hold a lot of weight to me. I think he's a great coach. Um, I don't think he's a good fit for DePaul. Yep. Okay. So we're going to stay in the Missouri Valley because I think that's where potentially their next coach is going to come from. Um, so we're Josh Shirts, Indiana State, Brian Wardle from Bradley and Darren DeVries from Drake. I will tell you, Darren DeVries is not coming to the yeah. He just, we had a great interview with him. Great coach. He's both a great program at Drake. He just doesn't strike me as a, no. as a Chicago type of guy. Yeah. Well, we should just take him out of the mix. Um, yep. he, his, his name's going to be thrown out there a lot. Um, you know, coach. yeah, he's a great coach. You know, he's, uh, his, his son is the star of his current team who will, should be playing in the NBA next year or, or close to it. Right. So it's, he kind of has the opportunity this off season to kind of reset where he wants to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, like you, I do not see him coming to DePaul. I, he's, he's yep. going to stay close to Iowa and Nebraska, that area where he's, um, well-known, well-regarded. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about Josh shirts mm -hmm. and Brian Wardle. Cause those could be two legitimate. Yeah. Head coaches at DePaul next year. Now, I think you said Josh Schertz is only making only making like three hundred twenty thousand, I think, a year. At um, did you tell me that in Indiana State? Maybe I would have to look at what I provided yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, well, I appreciate that. Thanks for looking <laughs> at it right now. Um, but then you said Brian Wardle is making like seven hundred plus. I think he's making around that number. Yeah, I mean, take the salaries out of it. It's, I mean, yeah. these guys. I think it's they're, they're two good coaches that are building programs. Um, I think they've built programs. Yeah. They've built programs. Yeah. They've built a culture and like how, I don't know, like I'm not in their shoes. Like what do you, you've built a program somewhere in a really strong college town. The towns love you. Right. Like what? I don't think it's like it was 10, 15 years ago. I think it's like, once you build a really strong program, that risk of leaving that to a, to a bigger program. I think the risk is more because as we've talked to coaches recently, it's yep. like, you don't have five years to build a program anymore. No, like you got like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. You're going to, you're going to be judged very quickly on how well you can do. Right. But if you, right. But if you look at a lot of the coaches, right, especially in the Mac. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Gross has been at Akron for seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, Sender Hoffer we're supposed to eventually have from Kent state's been there 13 years. You're seeing guys staying longer yeah. Um, because I think there's more of a, not a comfortability, but it's the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. But the thing that intri intrigues me, and you've talked about shirts and uh, Wardell too, but more so shirts, is he is a guy who built Lincoln Memorial, okay, yeah. Division II program. He's building Indiana State. He could maybe build DePaul. Same with War Wardell. He played at Marquette, so he understands the whole culture of, remember we asked him, give me one word to describe DePaul. He goes, blue demons but played at marquette he turned around wisconsin green bay he's turned around bradley can he turn around a, turn around a third team those two what do you think uh i'm a shirts guy like i like josh shirts a lot i think what's appealing to I'm more him, of a skins guy <laughs> well I, josh shirts 48 years old you know and obviously building indiana state into i think they're you know they've been in the top 50 in ken palm all year they're yep. one of the best shooting teams in the country his background is so unconventional yes right like well, like how he has built his own career kind of right? like coach becker right at vermont exactly like yep. coach Josh Shirts at Indiana State. He is one of the hardest working blue collar coaches out there, I think, in yeah. my mind, from yeah. what I see. Yeah. And I I Chicago will receive that with open arms. Right. Yeah. Like in both of the guys you mentioned already have like a portal into Chicago recruiting, right? Um, you know, Josh Shirts are a couple of his top guys are in the Chicago area. Yep, probably a VM. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, he's already 
he's not a new name in the Chicago recruiting scene, but at the same time, it's like his kind of blue collar, unconventional roadmap to where he's gotten. I want that as, as a DePaul alumni, like that is very appealing to me. Right. Yeah. I just want, I want a coach that's going to win in the press conference. You're going to be like, you know what I've, I've tried and I, and I, and I know I'm at fault. I've tried to be behind every coach at DePaul's and you always give me a hard time about it because you know what? I get it. I've, I've, I've been in that chair at DePaul, obviously in another sport and I understand the uphill battle. So I like to give them the respect they deserve. And then when they suck, then it's like, all right, let's get rid of them. And I don't mean that in an uh, in all negative way. So you, do you like, well, now you talked about shirts. What about Brian Wardell? Or Wardell I, like, or Wardell. I like Brian Wardell. Um, I think he's a very good on the You're court. You're not sold for him at DePaul, though. I'm not. I'm not. I think that they're – and what well, I think he's missing something that I really want to take into consideration with this job is what what a coach is going to be willing to do outside the locker room, outside the practice facility, outside of games, right? And Chicago is a very big city. I think you have to kind of pound he's the from Chicago. He's not from Chicago. He's from like the Northwest suburbs or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a dick comment. <laughs> hey, he, any lots of people can claim Chicago, but let, let's be honest. Like it's, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I want somebody who's going to be almost like living downtown, right? Like in the mix of downtown you think Chicago. commute. I t- yeah, I mean, I, I actually do, but, uh, <laughs> um, Hey, we'll see. We'll see. I think I think Brian Wardle's a very good coach on the court. I think he's a great locker room coach. I think he's a great press guy. Great um, human being too. Yeah, cr- incredible person. But yeah. I I I don't can know. I, like, can I, I tell you something? We just lost the one listener we have on a consistent basis <laughs> from Priori, Illinois. Brian, I love you, coach. Hey, you know what? I, I, I love gotta him say, too. I love him no. Too. I gotta tell you something. We have a listener every podcast in Berlin, <laughs> Germany. Love it's it. Sie Deutsch. Yes. We got to yeah. say big up to that one. Okay. Big up. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think Wardle's really good. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, and maybe it's the, uh, DePaul coming out of me, not wanting a Marquette guy to yep. uh, take over uh, the helm as well. So, yep. but yep. you want the best guy there. And it's, I, yep. I do think the best guy needs to be able to, would you be happy? Would Chicago. you be happy with all these guys on the list? <sighs> no. <laughs> you know, okay. looking and, at and that's list. and that's fine. So yeah, no. the one guy, and this is going to segue into guy that you. So Tim Anderson, I'm not sold on. I know the Chicago mm-hmm. Public League AU coaches will push him, but he has no head coaching yeah. experience. We need someone that's won and built programs. And I think all these guys, even though some might not be the gr- greatest fits in mine or yours or both of our opinion, they still have built programs. Okay, it, it might be mid major, whatever. Okay. But you've got a name that I wasn't sold on at first, mm. but I'm very much warmed up to it. You, now, if we did hire an assistant, there's two guys. The one guy is Justin Ganey at yeah. Tennessee. You know, he's he's mm-hmm. coached at Marquette. He's a great recruiter. Tennessee's like doing very well. I think yeah. if we're going to go the assistant route, him. But who's the other guy we both like because of you? This is all you, baby. Who is? I it? mean, I, here's the thing. It's I'm going to throw a name out there that's not being thrown out enough, and maybe it's because I don't know. Right. But, you know, on paper, what I see on national television, what you read about this guy, he would be a perfect fit for DePaul University Blue Demons in the city of Chicago. His name's Kamani Young. He's the associate head coach at UConn. It's in his fifth season with Danny Hurley. They have a national championship, obviously. I think the associate head coach thing means something with programs where the head coach may be retiring soon. Danny Hurley's not going anywhere. Right. right. Like, so I do think Kamani Young, if he is willing to go somewhere else, I think he belongs in either New York City or Chicago based on his background. He's born and raised in Chicago, like just a big city guy, like takes care of his own in the city, all that kind of like good story stuff to be able to bring that to Chicago. He's a player's coach as well. Like mm-hmm. the players love him. Right. And so what he can do in the city of Chicago would be something we haven't had yet in a, in a coach in a really long time. The other thing I really like is every single player in the big East knows him. And if, if he made the transition to a head coaching position in the big East, like what DePaul has to offer, 
he could potentially grab every top transfer out of the portal in the off season. And yep. we would have a competitive team day one next year with him. Yep. They so, might not be the best coach, but we'll have the most athletic. That's to be determined. You know, yep. like, I mean, he knows every, like he's the founder of coaches for action, which is big East assistant coaches, like mm -hmm. brotherhood fraternity type thing. Like he, he would be able to bring in a, an extremely competitive staff, an extremely competitive team starting on day one. And I don't think that there's anybody else in the country who could do those things as quickly as him. Yep. Yep. Okay. I, I mean, I like those. Uh, now I'm going to throw out two names. Okay. One we've had on the podcast, one we haven't had on the podcast. Mm -hmm. The first one, we haven't talked about this. Okay. Mo Williams. Okay. NBA pedigree. Yeah. Very good college player. Very good pro. Won an NBA championship. Turned around Alabama State. He's turning around Jackson State. He obviously was a teammate to LeBron James. He's well respected. What do you think about a, a guy like that? Just a random, that's a random thought from LT, maybe. It's a good thought. Yeah. Um, we've talked about Mo Williams in the past because we had his coach on. And yeah. um, and his kids follow us on Instagram. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to yeah. those kids. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's um, I don't I don't not like it. I think that I think that Mo Williams is a he's going to be a basketball guy for the rest of his life. I think he's going to be coaching somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. I think he just loves. I mean, he doesn't need to. You know, I think right. he just he right. loves the game. I think he he's a really good player develop like player development type of coach. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's like is he is he hungry enough to to take a take a team that's just completely in the basement right now? You know, and. Um, I don't have the answer to that. I think there's better options than Mo Williams. I don't think he's a bad option. Um, I think he would be able to get a lot of players to come to DePaul, but to be able to um, – a lot of good players. Um, to be able to – like I I think everybody is when, – when people are throwing out these lists, I think they're underestimating with how hard this job is going to be the first year. Yep. Right. Um, I mean, you're going to need a coach to come in and work harder than they've done anything else in their entire life to be able to turn this program around, right? It's and, not just like six text messages and you set up your office kind uh, of thing. Yeah, like, I mean, I do think it's something that you need to find not just the right guy, but the right guy at the right part of his life who is basically going to say like, hey, I'm I'm throwing everything I have. I'm, I want to put my career on the line to turn this program around in two to three years. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so here, here's it. Here's it. Here's there's two other names. Mm -hmm. Any any assistant coach from uh, Kentucky? No, because you know PV is well connected in Kentucky. <laughs> PV is well connected. I, you know they're throwing names okay. out like uh, Orlando and Tiga. That's his name, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think like it's. I think moving from a Kentucky to a DePaul, I think that's a bad move because of how different the programs operate. Right. Yep. Now. Culture. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, you're I don't want to say you're spoiled at Kentucky, um, but at the end of the day, it's like you, yep. you kind of are it's Kentucky. You know? And yep. it's like, I mean, and there, there's nothing bad about that, but getting the getting the type of resources that you have at your disposal out of Kentucky mm -hmm. and then going to a DePaul and trying to create those resources, yep. like that's it, it it's a different job, it's different responsibilities, it's you know, it's a different mentality altogether. Yeah, you know what I'm thinking? Because you talked about we should go to a midnight madness. Let's go to Kentucky's in the fall. All right. That would be pretty cool. You know, that would be it. pretty cool. Okay. So <clears throat> we've talked about this one. This was all your um, doing. Um, he was the head coach at Illinois, got fired. Kind of a unique situation. Uh, but he is the head coach of Akron, the Zips. Coach Gross. I mean, the Zips were good when he came in. They struggled mm -hmm. the first year. But he is getting that the, he's just getting a different type of player and they almost beat UCLA two years ago, lost in double overtime. I believe it was. I am a big fan of coach gross. And, yeah. um, I think he, <clears throat> I think his mentality and the culture and blueprint he brings to any program belongs at a power conference. Right. Um, like he is, He's one of those mid-major coaches who, when you look on the sidelines, you're like, all right, that guy's in charge of the game right now, 
right? They mm-hmm. could be down by eight points. They could be up by 20 points. You're just like, Hey, that guy is, that guy is in charge of this game right now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, so I think he would do very well in a big East program, um, especially at basketball. You- like a basketball centric program. I think Illinois is one of those programs where, you know, they, they have so many roller coasters when it comes to basketball, right. There wasn't a lot of patience with him there. Um, but I think yeah, but he know, also didn't he have like three or four ADs or two or three ADs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of an unstable kind of atmosphere during his tenure there. But mm-hmm. um, I mean, he's, he's, he's got basketball, you know, in his DNA, DNA yep. and you know, an Indiana okay. guy, like I, I think he gets the history of where where he grew up. I, you know, he understands the history of DePaul and the success mm-hmm. that they've had, and like what he could potentially bring back there. I think he would be a good fit for a big city as well. Just the intensity he so. brings, you know. But I do you think I, he would take the job because he's got it. I think he's he's doing well financially. Yeah. He's in Akron, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got you know he's got Ali Ali and Enrique Freeman. Uh, Greg Tribble. I mean, he's lo- going to lose a lot this year, yeah. but I feel like he's got a system, and I and I know the AD personally ain't going to let him leave. Like he's going to like no, they'll throw everything him in a room like they did with you Jim know. Harbaugh on the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a different story. Is is DePaul a better position than Akron? Right now, it's not. Right, but what we talked about earlier is whoever Potential. whoever could turn that program around. Here's the thing. It's like Coach Gross can go sit in any boardroom in Chicago and pitch NIL, right? And potentially he there, there's there's a lot more money to be built from NIL in Chicago than there is Akron, right? Yeah, I agree. And so if he's willing to take on that challenge, as you know, like I he would do very well. But it, like we've talked about, it's you know, I mean, it's added responsibilities for a lot of these head coaches, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 like it's a year round job, mm-hmm. and um, you know, you threw his name out, and or I threw his name out, you know, and nope. I but I but I know you really like him, and that's why I yeah. wanted to throw his name out because I was like, hey, here's a guy who would I, I I think he would do well if he wanted the job, right? And I think that there's there's a handful yeah. of guys who could actually do well at DePaul. Yeah, and there's something in my opinion, and another guy I, I'm kind of warming up to too is Tom Crean. I don't know if he's the best fit, but he would be a good option. I, I there's something about a guy that has gone to the top of the mountain and gotten kicked off of it and yeah. trying to get back, meaning Illinois, Indiana, Will Wade at LSU. You know, mm-hmm. some of these guys that have been fired. I wouldn't put Bryce Drew in there because Vanderbilt's really not it's more of a hill, not mountain. Yeah. Um you know, like a small, like an ant hill, not an actual hill. But I, I think, you know, Tom Crean would be an interesting one. He's available, uh, as is Chris Mack. But I don't see Chris Mack um, going to DePaul. I just, I don't see him. <clears throat> I just don't see him going to DePaul. So, no, I mean, I think it's, I, I, I can't. Any of those guys you just named, like uh, Tom Crean or Chris, I don't, I don't see those guys coming to DePaul. I think yeah. it's. Um, I think both of those guys have had a taste and I, I, Tom Crean can get a better job. You know, if, if he wants to get back into coaching, right. Yeah. There'll be, he knows that there's other positions open. And I mean, the benefit with him is he's not coaching right now, you know? So it's like, he could be taking interviews tomorrow. So if he, and he kind of knows that, you know, there's going to be other programs that open up before the season ends. And, um, I think he's a smart enough guy to say like, Hey, like I've proven myself at different points in my career that, you know, mm-hmm. the, I, I, he has the flexibility to wait for the right opportunity if he wants to get back into it. Yeah. 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 I think that's, I think that's good. And then you've got Mark Rod- Godfrey, who'd be another good one. You, but you I don't like think that. you like allow the coach. Yeah. I don't see Mark Godfrey leaving the, uh, the California coast. <laughs> you see him play like yeah. paddle tennis or yeah, like the ball and that, like, yeah, he's, he, he's enjoying life right now. And yeah, I think he's he, he's one of the best coaches who's not coaching right now. Yeah, um, but I don't see him. I don't know, he's he's got a pretty good life out in California right now. Yeah. Can you imagine if Dan Dockich ever got that job? Do you think we'd be talking about this right now? No, no. I mean, it's but I think it's a different era. Yeah, you know, and can somebody like? I mean, obviously, Dockage won't take the job, and probably won't get asked to take the job. But like right. someone with his mentality, we just we just lost another listener potentially. <laughs> um, 
it's it's such a odd time in college basketball with the rule changes and like yeah. what style will prove to be winning. I mean, look at the season already. You know, look how I mean, it's it's so unpredictable. And to your point with the mid majors and someone like um, Coach Gross or even like a Shirts or somebody like that, yeah. like it's these programs can beat anybody on any given day. Like, yep. like, do they have a better chance to move into the postseason tournament? Absolutely, in a bigger conference, you know. Mm-hmm. But are they? I mean, here's the thing. If you ask Coach Gross, like, hey, like, do you think you have a better odds at getting to the tournament in the next three years with DePaul or with Akron? He's going to say Akron all day right now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? yep. And yep. I wouldn't disagree with him. And you probably know? most coaches would say that, wouldn't you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and that, but that's with Big East. Like, I think Big East right now is predicted to get like nine teams in the tournament right now. The only, <laughs> the only conference that I think – that a coach might see it have a better chance gaining in DePaul because of the Big East and being a Power Six conference in basketball is a Missouri Valley Conference coach. Yeah, I think they're going to get screwed. They deserve three teams, but mm-hmm. they're probably going to get one, maybe two. Yeah, it's up in the air. I mean, I think that's where you know we'll talk. We won't be. Uh, this won't be the last time we talk about DePaul um, no. for sure. But it's. Um, that's that's what the conversation is going to lead to is to the two questions is the coach a good fit and are they actually willing to take the position you know and i think it's yeah. finding that right marriage of where a coach is in his career is going to be absolutely essential to building the program and what i don't want to happen with the paul is to say okay yeah the first seven guys said no we're not interested <laughs> so then you're like well i mean it's that's hey i mean there's nothing wrong with that it means you're asking guys who um, you're asking the right guys and you don't, you know, I mean, me and you, it's like, we're not afraid of nose. So right, it's like, right. I mean, married like, for almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, the, the, op- the opportunity at DePaul is there, you know, um, but you need somebody who wants to help create it. Right. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask, let me ask you, there. yeah, let me ask you two hypothetical questions and then we'll, then we'll be done this. Cause we could talk all day about DePaul basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think if Kenny Payne took the job, over Tony Stubblefield, like that was going to be reported. That was their that was their first guy. Do you mm-hmm. think we would have be in a better situation? Yeah, I do. Do you think he'd be on the hot seat? Do you think he'd be struggling as much as because I mean, so. he's struggling I, I, at freaking Louisville? Well, he's struggling at Louisville. I think he, I think DePaul would have been a better fit for him. Um, I think the relate. I think he had a relationship, or probably still does, with PV. You know. Um, yeah. that was very close with their, with their time in Kentucky together. Um, do I think we'd be like top five or six in the conference with Kenny Payne? No, but do I think we'd have more than three wins this season? I do. So, Four. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? You, you asked a yes or no question. I gave you yep. the answer and yep. um, I think we would have yep. been in a better position. You know, it's, yep. I, um, you know, I went to a uh, DePaul game last year and I just, uh, I saw a lot of things firsthand. Um, that, you know, you don't see on television and things like that. And it was, it was really disappointing. And I, that, and I think I called you after that and I was like, man, we're, we're, we're in deep shit as a program, you know? And, um, and so who knows? I mean, I don't, I, again, it's like, you know, we're talking about human beings, we're talking about people and, um, you don't want to see anything bad happen to anybody. And that's why, you know, I do give, um, Dwayne PV, the AD and vice president at DePaul, um, a lot of credit for how he's managed um, the situation this year, not waiting till the end of the season, and you know, also you know, focusing on the goals that he has for the program. Yeah. And right. honestly, he really can't yeah. fuck it up this time. You can't have two bad yeah. hires. So I think he's trying to get ahead of it. All right, give me your three. If you could pick three coaches, man, your top three. I was going to say your top one, but I'm not going to do that. Your top three. Who would they be? You know my top one. Okay, give me two. your top three. Can I just give you two? Nope, three. Three. All right. So I would. Um, they don't have to be in order either. Just give me three guys that you'd lo- that you'd yeah, be very happy so, and love to see at the right. ball. Uh, Kamani Young. Yep. Will Wade. Yep. Oh, man. Mike uh, Jones. I- I'll say gross. I'll say gross. Even though he's. I just don't. Yeah. Uh, I'd I'd say you're, ki- you're kicking people, your boy shirt to the curve. Well, no. So that's what I was trying to decide on the people who I here's I'm going to throw Kamani Young, Will Wade, and Josh Shirts 
out there because I think all three of those should seriously look at the the position mm-hmm. um, because I think it would be a good fit for all three of them. And I and I think that as I've already said a couple times, there's very few people in the country who this job would be a good fit for um, and who would be able to turn the program around right away. Um, those three, I think, have the right mentality um, to go in there and turn the program around like for in year one. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Who you got? Uh, I'm going to stay the likable one on the podcast, uh, the the podcast host. So I'm I'm going to defer because you've already pissed off my guy Brian Wardle. You've uh, who else you pissed <laughs> off? <laughs> you know, I didn't okay. piss him off. I think I, I think he's an incredible coach at Brian. I, I, I like should... those. I would I like those three. Uh, yeah, I would good. throw um, Gross or Wardle in there too. I think any of those five. Um, you know me, you tell you get to pick one and I pick six. So it's fine. Um, but but honestly, anybody on this list, bar from like one or two guys, mm-hmm. I I would be okay with because at least I would have hope because they have a body of work, right? They've done it at other programs. Would it translate to DePaul? Who knows? And that's why we keep talking about it. We'll see. I, yeah, I, I, I like them all as well. Um, there's a few that I think would be at the bottom of my list. We can get into yeah. that on the next episode when we talk yeah. about the poll. Yeah. This but, is a 36 um, part series. <laughs> 36 <laughs> for 36. Episode one. Yeah. ESPN can have their 30 for 30. We're going to have 36 for 36. <laughs> <laughs> Which is going to go on forever. It's like. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. um, that was a fun podcast. Uh, I have reached out to DePaul. They uh, did think it would be a good idea to have co- um, coach, to have uh, athletic director and vi- vice president, kept seeing VP, uh, Dwayne Peavy on the podcast. So we're going to stay on that. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, now is not the time because it's in season. You know, there's really not much to talk about. But I think middle of March, beginning of March, I'm going to I'm going to reach out in a, probably in a month and just be like, hey, we'd love to chat. We want to know what's going on because it means something to us. I have not watched any DePaul basketball. I watched a little bit of the uh, Northern Illinois game and that was it. And it's like, you know, big up to uh, Rashawn Burno. Mm-hmm. There you go. say Bruno. Burno. Rashawn Burno. Uh, he's not related to His Doug name's Bruno. been thrown out as a candidate too. I know we both yeah. have thoughts on that. Maybe we talk about that in a future yeah. um, podcast. Yeah. It'd be great to get him on to talk about yeah. his thoughts as his Absolutely. alumni. Um, yeah, I watched a little bit of the Paul Marquette game, and um, the Demons played really hard. And um, again, it's like we don't wish anything poorly on anybody. And the way the players um, responded to what's happened to their program this week, nope. um, it, w- it was as a former student athlete, it was fun to see those guys playing as hard as they did with the news that was given to them yeah. this week. So big kudos good, to those good. guys. All right. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Follow us on Twitter and uh, Instagram. The Graham. We're almost at a thousand K. Ooh. Nothing happens when you get a thousand followers on uh, Instagram. Uh, we've gotten twelve really nice five star reviews. We appreciate another one. And as always, Sam's got balls in his hand. He loves balls or ball in his hand. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to pass the rock. Pass can the we, rock. Yeah. Can we potentially say that we're the fastest growing college basketball podcast out there? Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, some people like my, your boy John Rostein says. I don't have hobbies. I watch college basketball, which I want to respond. And I want to say to him, I don't have hobbies. I just watch porn. Oh, God. All right. I think that no, might but be I, I think we are also, but, too. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think we're the most diverse college basketball podcast, too, because we get a lot, a lot of great coaches. We, we're not, you know, I, I've tried some of the bigger names. Actually, no, I haven't. I've tried some of the bigger programs, but they're like not yeah. at the moment. I mean, we're not. We're, small bus, but I, we're, we're, we're in our first year. We're popping out new interviews. We're not even the first year. Yeah, with the first three with, months. With, yeah, with some of the best coaches in the country. And it's been an absolute blast with Yelty. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, the coaches and the players, they're leaving the podcast very happy. And those five-star those five reviews, I love them. Yes, so they make me happy. Them. It means like we're doing something. But the funny thing is we have a ton of players and coaches that follow us on Twitter mm-hmm. and Instagram. I converse with them which is nice that, you know, like Ali Ali, I told you, I showed you that comment. He thanked us for all the content and supporting Mm -hmm. um, the team. Enrique Freeman has too. I mean, a couple other, you know, just just guys. So it's been really, you know, Coach Kaufman I keep in contact with. I mean, it's been really fun and um, I'm really excited. And you know who just followed us after following them in November was Drew Joyce. 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like three months later. Like three months yeah. later. Get coach, jo- co- get coach Joyce on the pod. Yeah, we're gonna get him. I want to get him. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to get him when he's in town in Akron and and sitting on my backyard. And we'll we'll filter you in and we'll just we'll really shoot the shit because I think it'd be a really good uh, uh, episode to have. And 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 who knows where where he's gonna be next? So uh, right. and I'm not starting any rumors, but don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Follow us. We'll be back uh, soon. I always say next week, but it could be three days later with another episode. So, <laughs> peace out. A town. <laughs> All right. Full court press podcast. Hey. College basketball experience. Get it out.